and this is physics 140 the best way to begin your day um, and today we are trying to find uh, the center of mass of a triangle so consider a triangle uh, sitting on the x-axis a right angle triangle sitting on the x-axis uh, in such a way that one of the sides coincides with the x-axis right so this side is perpendicular to the x-axis and let's say this uh, the, the the length of this triangle the length the length of this triangle uh, is L, so let's uh, choose coordinate X in such a way so that origin is at the tip of the triangle, L and L corresponds to the base of the triangle, okay? So the entire length is L. So the problem is to find the coordinate, X coordinate of the center of mass of this shape, presuming that the triangle is solid, okay, so solid, uniform, so uniform density uh, and constant thickness. So you can think about a sheet of um, some material, maybe some metal, and you cut a triangle out of that metal, and while well, this entire triangle well, has uniform uh, thickness and uniform density, okay? Um, all right, so, um, well, how do we do this? Um, question mark. Um, by definition, uh, position of the center of mass for a point mass, for a set of point masses, is just the sum of, well, the positions for each point mass times its mass divided by the total mass of the system. Well, in this case, it's a continuous distribution of mass, so we need to replace the definition with integration, right? So instead of doing a discrete summation of individual masses, we need to split the triangle or any other mass distribution into tiny bits, tiny bits each of mass dm, okay, and instead of integrating this over, uh, instead of summing over those bits, we would need to integrate, right, x dm divided by total mass, okay, so this is essentially the same, right, so, th so this is summing the masses of small bits, this is also summing the masses of small bits, so this is summing xm, so this is summing x dms, okay, or g because it's small. Um, now, how do we practically do this? Uh, realistically, to, in order to be able to do this integral, uh, we need to either express mass in terms of x or x in terms of mass. Right? We can we can we, we can take an integral where both the integration, uh, the function we are trying to integrate, and the variable. Well, so essentially, we can take, integrate a function of m dm, or we can integrate a function of x dx. We cannot integrate a function function of x dm. We cannot do that. Uh, so the usual trick uh, in this type or any other type of integration problems we will encounter in physics 140 is to uh, is to well reduce one of them towards the right. Okay, R reduce. Uh, typically, we would like to express mass in terms of coordinates. This is typically easy. Okay, so let's start to do this. Um, now, before we do that. Notice that uh, for a point mass, let's say there is a point mass dm which has a coordinate x, located x, uh, at coordinate x, uh, then if you s select an adjacent mass dm just above it or just below it, for any one of these masses at the same coordinate x, well, the contribution x dm is going to be the same x is going to be the same for all three masses so if we don't actually so if we do the summation x dm for this mass x dm for that mass and x dm for that mass the result will be the same x the common x for all three masses times the total mass okay so instead of, instead of selecting dm as a tiny square bit well we can select dm as a strip we can select as a strip of material Okay, you can think of a stripe painted on the uh, on the triangle, if you like, uh, which is still small, right? This mass is still small if its thickness, which I'm going to call dx, if its thickness is small, the mass within the strip is also small, and all of this mass is x away uh, from the origin, right? So it's it's all at the same distance. So I can say, well, this is my dm. This entire strip is dm. Okay. All right, so what I'm trying to do now is to express this dm, mass of the strip, in terms of its thickness uh, and other coordinates, okay? Uh, in this case, uh, since, the, uh, since the triangle uh, is uniform, 
Uh, that means its surface mass density is constant, which means mass per unit area is the same. Okay, so you select a bigger area, you get more mass. Okay, so we can express this uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in the following way. We can write dm is mass density per unit area, how much mass per unit area you have, times the area. Right? So, so this is a constant, mass per unit area is the same, uh, but if you select a bigger area, you get more mass. Okay? Particularly in this situation, well, what is the area of the strip? Well, the area of the strip can be written uh, well, as its width, which we denoted dx. Right? That's the change of x from one strip to the next one. Right? The next one will have a coordinate x plus dx. So if we selected the adjacent strip on the right, that, would, that one would have a coordinate x plus dx. So the thickness is exactly dx. Uh, times its height, which I'm going to call y. Okay, so if I introduce my y-axis perpendicular to the x-axis, well then this, the height of this strip, is going to give me precisely the y-coordinate of this line. Okay? Well, Alright, so well, I can do this integral if I plug this in. So I can write dm, dm is sigma times dA and dA is y dx, y dx. Okay? So I can do this, x sigma y dx divided by integral well dm sigma y dx so now i do have uh well the function of x dx well and here here i have a function of x dx so so that's essentially what i tried to do moreover since sigma is a constant since sigma does not depend on x i can always pull sigma outside the integral well, and once I do pull it outside the integral, well, it's just the same sigma in the numerator denominator, so I can cancel it out. So I can cancel sigma out. Now, can I do the same with y? Well, the answer is no. I cannot do the same with y because y is different for different strips. Right? So for this strip, y is small. For that strip, y is large. So as I go along the x-axis, the height of the strip is different. It varies. It changes with x. So y is a function of x. So I cannot just put y outside the integral and cancel out. Okay? Y is a function of x. So what is this function of x? Well, in this particular case, in the case of a triangle, this is a very simple function. Well, because we see this as a straight line. Moreover, this is a straight line passing through the origin, so I can write this is y equals kx. So the height of the strip is directly proportional to the distance to the origin. While the further the strip is from the origin, while the bigger it's gone. Right? The, the, the line is kx, so it, 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 it is passing through the origin. Okay? So, uh, well, you can say we don't know k. Well, we, we could know k if we were given this height, but it turns out we don't even need the k. Well, all we need is to know that the k is a constant, and we know that because we know this is a straight line, okay? So k is a constant. So, well, the function we are looking for is just the uh, 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 direct proportionality relationship, and y equals kx. So, uh, the position of the center of mass can be written as integral of x now y is kx, kx dx, divided by integral kx dx, okay? So, well, now k is a constant. As I said, well, that's all that matters, that the k is simply a constant. And we can pull k uh, outside the integral and cancel it out, okay? So k does not, has no consequence. So we are left with an integral x squared dx in the numerator and integral x dx uh, in the denominator. Uh, in both cases, we are trying to s do the summation. The original summation goes over the entire area of the triangle. So, well, if we are doing the integration over x, we need to begin while well, at x equals 0 and finish at x equals l. So, both integrations from 0 to l. Well, these are the integrations we can do. Uh, the first integral is x cubed over 3 taken between 0 and L, which results in L cubed over 3. And the second integral in the denominator is x squared over 2, taken between 0 and L, so it's L squared over 2. So, 
Well, this works out, x center of mass, so it works out to 2 thirds, and L cubed over L squared gives us linear L, L, L to the first power. So what we get is the position of the center of mass is exactly 2 thirds of the distance from the tip to the base. So, well, it's one third away from the base, it's two thirds away from the tip. So, well, that's, that's a universal result. That's a universal result for any rotating triangle, no matter what the height is, no matter how long this side is, what, uh, all it matters is that there is a, a straight line here, and for any, uh, uh, for any uh, triangle, uh, right angle triangle like this, we would get exactly the same result of two thirds L, uh, away from the tip. Um, it, it is important to understand where these two thirds come from. So, so where this numerical prefactor comes from. Well, these two thirds come from these two thirds, right? These two and these three, and these two thirds come from this power two in the integral and this power one in the integral. Well, now where do these powers come from? Well, these powers come from dependence of y on x, right? So just because this side was a straight line, that's where that's what fixed the power of x in our case, okay? So uh, so if we had a different shape, of course, this dependence would be different. Y as a function of x might have been different, and there is, uh, the, the integrals might have been more complicated, and the result, of course, would have a different numerical prefactor, uh, but of course it would be some number times L, just because of dimensionality, right? So if, if the if you if you if if we know the length of the triangle is L, it must be some fraction of L. Well, simply because L is in meters and XCM must be in meters, so there is only one dimensional quantity which is expressed in meters, which is L. So XCM must be proportional to L with some numerical prefactor for whatever uh, or shape you have. Okay, but for triangle, it is particularly simple. Well, I guess this concludes, the, uh, concludes this problem. Uh, uh, the, the idea, the main idea of all the integration problems we will be doing in physics 140 is pretty much the same. We will be arriving at some integral, which, which is very easy to arrive at, right? This is essentially just a definition. This is just a definition. So the tricky part is to actually do this integral, uh, and to do that, we need to express either mass in terms of coordinate or coordinate in terms of mass. So, so this part of the solution is really all about expressing dm in terms of dx, right? So that's that's the entire that's the entire idea. Uh, uh, so once we express it in terms of dx, well, we can always do the integral of some function of x dx. So then it's just a, a technical uh, the technical uh, evaluation of the integral. Uh, but the, the physics is really here. The physics, the, or rather geometry is here. Um, one uh, last note is related to our finding of the area of the strip. Um, so some of you might worry that, well, let's say if I blow up the strip. And so, so the shape of the strip is like this. Right, so, so it's not actually a rectangle. Right, so, so it's 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 a rectangle with some uh, uh, some side which is kind of uh, tilted. Right. Um, now you can say, well, the area of this rectangle, well, it's not just you know its width times its height. You can say this is not th this is not just a product of its width times its height, and this would be true. In general, it would be true for a finite width of the triangle uh, of, of this shape. Uh, now, but remember that dx is actually infinitesimal width. So this this strip is very narrow. So essentially, it's pretty much has zero thickness. So if you if you shrink the strip, uh, uh, well, towards zero thickness, so you 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 let the dx. Uh, go to zero. Uh, well, you will you will realize that whatever whatever the, the the mistake whatever error we make by approximating this 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 shape with that shape is really uh, a, a second order of ma uh, of magnitude uh, in terms of the smallness. Okay, so so the area of this uh, of this tiny part of this kind of uh, 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 you know 
incorrectly shaped part uh, a is proportional to dx squared. Okay, uh, and while well, the the main area is proportional to dx, so so this is the first order in small quantity dx, and whatever the corrections we are making here, they are second order. They are proportional to dx squared. So we can always neglect them whenever we are talking about infinitely thin strips. So again, the correct picture would be something like this, right? So something which is very thin, and when it's very thin, it doesn't really matter if it, if this uh, cap is 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 well horizontal or it's it's tilted or whatever not. Okay, so you can say uh, well it's it's a typical approximation. So that's one uh, caveat, uh, one small caveat you should be aware. Of. All right, so this concludes uh, this problem. We successfully found the uh, center of mass of, uh, of a rectangle, uh, and it turned out to be two-thirds of its length away from the tip. Somewhere here.